from in Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. Here, the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing whacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. And we are together again on the radio. And in this segment of the program, <laughs> it uh, it has now opened. It is the number one movie in America. Sex and the City, the movie. Number one at the box office. That's because a lot of boxes were sitting in their seats watching it. They don't call it the box office for nothing. <laughs> and uh, despite the fact that uh, I was in Paris, I was uh, reading the Los Angeles Times, and I read the review of this film. Uh, by a woman named Karina Chocano. Now, this is billed as a movie review. And the last I looked, you see, to me, the quintessential film critic of our generation would be somebody like Roger Ebert. I'm not talking about the TV Roger Ebert when Roger was on television. I'm talking about the the written review Roger Ebert, the RogerEbert.com Roger Ebert. You know, uh, when when you read a movie review, here is what should be in, in my view, in a movie review. Is the movie good? Is it bad? Why is it good or bad? Is the acting good or bad? Is it well directed or not? Was it well written? And that's what I want to know. I don't really care about the critics' opinions about other things other than whether a movie is good. And honestly, I also don't particularly care to know about the business of a film. How much money will it make? Who's the target audience? I don't care. That's not the movie critic's business. The movie critic's business is to give me a detailed look at whether a movie is something I might want to see. And then uh, if you've got political opinions or if you've got opinions about who the audience for the film is, how about you keep those to yourself? How about you just shut up about that stuff? Seriously. How about you just shut up about that stuff? All right, well, we've got this film called Sex in the City, the movie. Or, as the poster said in Paris, Sex in the City, le film. <laughs> it also opened in Paris. And uh, let me read to you from this purported movie review by one Karina Chocano, who I happen to believe based on what she wrote, that her ability to be dispassionate, her ability to write honestly about the good and bad of the film is obscured by her strong opinions about whether or not certain people will or won't see this movie. 
Uh, because honestly, the reviews of this film at best have been mixed. Many critics don't like this movie. And um, I tend to wonder if some people feel that it's politically correct to say you like this movie. They feel that they have to say it or they feel they want to be supportive of the women or the concept of women, a movie about some aging broads with turkey necks who sit around talking about their sex lives. Somehow there are people who feel that that it's politically correct to say that this is a good movie, whether or not it is. I don't plan to find out whether it is. But here is the uh, review, just part of it. I'm going to read just a few paragraphs of it to you. This is Karina Chocano in the Los Angeles Times. She says, it's impossible to talk about the new Sex and the City movie without first mentioning Sex and the City, the HBO series, or the rabid fan devotion it enjoyed, or the equally fervent antipathy, female and male, it inspired on socio-political grounds, sort of like the late 90s equivalent of not letting your daughter play with Barbies, or the recently much-affirmed straight male aversion to the series predicated on cooties. Hello? Does it? Does your review of the film have anything to do with whether men go to see it? Whether men go to see the film has nothing to do with whether it's a good film. Some films are just not for men. Some films are not for women. Some films are not for children. Some films are not for the elderly. Some films are for the elderly. I mean, really, should every woman go see the new Jean-Claude Van Damme movie called JCVD that's coming? Which is, I guess, kind of a retrospective of the career of Jean-Claude Van Damme. If women don't go to see it, is there something sexist about that? That should be mentioned in the review. By the way, it's probably going to be a horrific movie, in my opinion, just because. What kind of movie do you make out of that? make any sense to me I saw many ads for it when I was in France but uh, whether it's another version of Die Hard or Lethal Weapon you know should we be writing in the movie review whether or not women will see these films or ought to see them you know, if, if, if the majority of people who go to see American Pie or American Pie 2 happen to be men, it, d- does that say something negative about the women who won't go see it? Seriously. And is it relevant to the review? But she had to get that in there. It says here, in fact, the film arrives shrouded in such a fog of expectation, preconception, anticipation, and now with more post-Hillary bite, gender bias, that it's hard to see or writing about the write about the movie for the trees. Which is too bad because Michael Patrick King, who executive produced the show with series creator Darren Starr and wrote and directed the movie, has done some brave, surprising things with it. And then she goes on to talk about whether the movie is good or bad or this or that. But then she gets back to this topic later in the review. And I actually uh, went and highlighted part of this because I, I didn't want to miss it. I didn't want to forget about this part. Here it is. After she tells you what she thinks of the acting and what she thinks of the various people and the writing and, you know, how the plot uh, matched up with the end of the TV series and blah, blah, blah. This is what she says. This is Karina Chocano in the Los Angeles Times. The elephant in the room is the question of whether men will see it, meaning the movie. For reasons that seem symptomatic of a much larger and deeper problem. Again, none of this related to the movie. None of this related to whether the movie is good or bad. Sex of the City seems to have become the movie pre-release that no man wants to see, or at least admit to wanting to see. By the way, that's also, f- not, not only is that irrelevant, it's false. Because gay men will see this movie in droves. Seriously. Dean D'Amelio's new neighbors, they're going out this weekend to see it. They're going to be having Sex in the City, Cosmo parties, right there in Dean's building. Tell you right now. 
Yes, it says here, and this is the review continues, considering the treatment Senator Hillary Rodham Clinton has gotten in the press throughout her presidential campaign, this comes as no surprise. Now we're talking about Hillary Clinton. Whatever happened to the movie? Is it good? Is it bad? Let's talk about men's reaction to Hillary Clinton. And whether straight men ought to be going to see Sex in the City. And the false idea that no men will see this movie. Have people forgotten how much gay men love that TV show? I think they liked it more than Queer as Folk, for God's sake. It says here, as far as the big Hollywood movies go, the idea that we might watch movies to empathize with characters whose lives are different from ours, but whose humanity links them to us, is all but lost. Look at that! Jesus! No, I'm not going to see this movie, Sex of the City. I wouldn't, uh, no way I would want to be, I don't want to be in the same zip code with a the movie theater playing this movie. I don't want to be uh, within within five football fields of anywhere this movie is playing. I don't. No interest. Zero. I don't know a single straight male who is, who, by the way, I'm sure there are some. You pussies. I'm sure there are some of you, your your girlfriend, or that chick you've been trying to date, or God forbid, your wife. I'm sure there are some of you guys out there who've been dragged to the theater, or who are going to be dragged. Oh, you wouldn't call me to admit it. I'm sure there'll be a few. Why would any straight man want to see this movie? About four over-the-hill hags who can't shut up about their sex lot who are delusional enough to believe that they're like fashion models or something. They're just a bunch of old hags. They're a bunch of turkey-necked old bags. That they, they, The characters look like just four alcoholics who sit around the table. It's pretty clear why most of them never meet the man of their dreams. It's pretty clear why some of the members of that foursome are so miserable. They're, they're, they're pathetic drunks who get together and spend all their money on, 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 on expensive designer clothing and then sit around uh, belittling all the men they know. Of course no man wants to be with them. Any man would want to date one of those four characters is, is, is a goddamn loon. Is there something wrong with men not wanting to see sex in the city? Is there something wrong with me for not wanting to see it? Why would any man go to see that? Why would any straight man go to see Sex in the City, the movie? Why? Why? I've got to know. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. He wanted to live with me, but, you know, the worst thing that he ever did was have me listen to you because the more I listen to you, the more I realize that... He's retarded. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1 800 5800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Oh, yeah, so terrible. The movie critic of the LA Times. Thinks there's some real problem. Straight men won't go see Sex in the City. <laughs> it's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. John, listening to our show online because this company doesn't think our show is good enough to run on the radio in San Diego. Hello, hey, Tom, Father. How are you, buddy? I'm doing okay. Great. Just wanted to wish you in advance a happy Father's Day, man. You are the best. Thank you very much. Yeah, just wanted to uh, give some. Uh, uh, opinions on this topic, man. Yeah, I was at the movie theater over the weekend seeing Strangers, and I'm in line with my date, and believe it or not, there are these girls that are dragging these guys to go see it. These guys look like maybe <laughs> teenagers, 20 years old, and I'm just laughing at her because both me and her hate the show, and we're loyal listeners to you, 
And we're just going, oh, man, these guys are <laughs> pussies, man. We're just going meow the whole time. It's so freaking ridiculous. And these are young guys, too. They need to listen to you. I just felt like going over there and telling them, man, you need some Like Us 101. It was just ridiculous. <laughs> I swear, man, I don't know what is wrong. Were they at least been embarrassed when you came up to them? <laughs> no, no, I didn't say anything. I, I was going too far. I was like, no. Nah, oh, God. Yeah, but I was at another movie theater, too, and there were these two... Fupas walking around with sex in his city shirts on. I was just like, oh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> this is pathetic. Oh, my goodness. That's terrible. That's it absolutely is, terrible. It is. I don't know any straight man that would even dare go see that movie, let alone get dragged in there by their girlfriend. It's just stupid. Just big meow on their half. Oh, hang on a second. I, I, I want you to say that to Blake. Blake, did you hear what John just said? Yeah, I heard what John just said, man. I'm a straight guy. I'm 30, and I went and got, saw the show. It was awesome. You got to be kidding me, man. No, man. The movie, the movie was incredible. I got to tell you that, man. I mean, if you have an open mind and you're actually in touch with some of the emotions that are inside you, you can probably uh, be able to feel some feelings and see any movie and appreciate any aspect or any angle. Okay, you know what you need to do, buddy? You need to take your balls out of your girlfriend's purse, man. <laughs> Yeah, my, my balls are immediately, my girlfriend. Immediately, first. all right? You get yeah, some common okay. sense, man. Why don't you go watch an action movie like Iron Man or something? At least get your masculinity back. <laughs> hey, man, I watch the UFC. I watch Iron Man. I feel sure. the movie. And I, I, honestly, I Because he likes the way the guys look in tight pants. I don't buy pants. that one bit. I don't buy that one bit, man. How could you find that entertaining when all they do is sit around and be bash on guys and, oh, well, my boyfriend doesn't do this, and he doesn't do this, and it's a uh, relationship is so horrible and repetitive. Please. I'll tell you. Okay, I'll tell you how. Because that's what they really do. So exactly. for me to be able so to watch the truth. You want to with your girlfriend, and she's probably taught. Don't you realize she's probably doing the same thing with her friends behind your back? I'm sure. I know she is. And you're They're just all doing it. And you're just going to tolerate that. No, no. I'm going to watch it oh, and Tommy, learn from it up. and use those tactics against them. What? I'm going to watch from it, learn from it, and be able to use those tactics against them. Know what's going on. What tactics, man? If you're, listen, if you're a loyal listener of Like Us 101, you wouldn't tolerate that. You wouldn't need to learn any new tactics to deal with that. Yeah, I, I listen to Like Us 101, and I still can appreciate a good film. You need immediately, man. I think, I think maybe you need to pull your balls up a little bit and start using your brain a little bit, my friend. Dude, I know how to use my brain. I would not subject myself to that. Really? Well, why not? Are you too closed-minded? No, because it? I'm a real man. I'm like you, homie. Okay, okay. Well, I, yeah. got, I got plenty of big balls, man. I'm using them all the time. Yeah, I bet you do, man. Your, sure your do. girlfriend just has it in her purse 24-7, though. That's the only drawback to it, huh? Hey, you know what? My wife is great. I your wife. Uh, it's a strike I one. Say, strike one, buddy. You're married. Strike it. one. How's that one? I learn something. Strike one. What else? You got? You got kids? No, I have no kids. Sure, sure. I, I don't have kids. Okay, okay. Well, you already got strike one against you against what? For as far as like it's one on one goes. Well, you know, hey, um, I got a great partner. That's what she is. She's a partner. Oh, and, great, uh, you know, great. we can ask together. He's found an exception to the rule. Whose heroes? Right, whose Kong heroes Kong. are a bunch of old I hags like with Kong turkey Kong. necks? Whose heroes are a bunch of old hags with turkey necks? You can hang all the expensive designer clothes on an old hag you want. She's still an old hag. They start looking like old hookers. I've seen the promos for this movie. They look <laughs> like a bunch of old cougars. Oh stuff. my! They do. They do. They do. Hey, I'm not. I'm. A, I'm agreeing uh, with you, but it was still. It was entertaining, Tom. Ah. Uh, you're killing me, Larry. Wow, Tom, you know, the only reason why he's saying that is just so he could get sex tonight from his wife. <laughs> <laughs> hey, or his hey, life partner. If, if it works, wear it. What? <laughs> if it works, wear it. Oh, my God. I'm not going to use that just to try to get sex. I'd rather pay yeah, I'll, I'll tell that, you what. If you're wearing roast beef, pal, you don't want to be wearing that, okay? <laughs> With a little horseradish on it. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. We're getting a call... This better not be Cairo, Illinois, Dean. Is this Cairo, Egypt? No, you spelled it right. I'm just making sure it's Cairo, Egypt and not Cairo, Illinois or something. All right. Listening to our online stream in Cairo, Egypt. Here's Mustafa. Uh, he, he could be a cab driver in Cairo, Illinois. I don't know. Mustafa on the Tom Likas show. Hello? Hey, I am calling from uh, Egypt, actually. Very good. I'm a... Uh... Big, big, big Tom Likas uh, fan. I stay up sometimes 3 in the morning. I'm listening to you right now. 
Um, I, one thing I, I, I respect you for is your, uh, your open-mindedness, and I agree with you in so many subjects such as religion, you know, women, you know, so many things. But uh, I have one question for you. Have you watched the TV show? Like, really oh, watched Did it? I see the TV show? I, I saw one or two episodes of the TV show back when I didn't know what it was when it first came on. When I figured well, out that it was about four aging old bags uh, who thought they were hot, sitting there getting drunk and dissing men all the time, I said, you know what? I don't know who the audience is for this show, but it's not me. Listen, I'm an 18-year-old male, uh, and I absolutely love the show. And I don't think it's fair for you to base your opinion from one or two episodes you saw. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. I think that's a little close-minded on your behalf. Sometimes it takes a few episodes to get into a show, you know? I, but the point is that I have read the plots of the shows. I have read what these women say on the show. It is a male-bashing show, and you know that's true. Because even fans of the show say they're fans of the male bash. I, I mean... I mean, yes, sometimes it did get a little extreme. You know, Not sometimes. Were, uh... A lot. Well, how, would, how would you know? You've because I've like... read about it. I mean, the thing is, this is one of those shows that people in New York care more about than the rest of the country. And so in New York, they're always writing articles about it and analyzing it. And uh, they were always quoting uh, the things people said. Uh, believe me, I read them over and over. I mean, okay, but then again, articles are people's are people's opinions. So no, opinion, if you put a quote, if you put a quote from a character, and the quote is somebody saying something negative about men, I don't have to watch the actual footage uh, to know that the person said exactly what was printed in the article. I, I just, in my in my opinion, it seems that you making I mean an entire segment about the show when you have little to no information about it except for articles. You've I know that the primary audience of the show is gay men. And aging women, or or the the fuglies and the fatties, uh, for whom these are heroes. Tom, I think you'd be surprised. I'm an 18 year old heterosexual male from Egypt, big fan. Well, and why is the critic? Like why is the female critic for the Los Angeles Times writing in her review, in her review that men are not going to see this film? I will quote Karina Chocano of the Los Angeles I, I, Times. I, I just read the review. All right. So you know what I'm talking about. She, she, right, why that, is I mean, she that, saying that? Why is she saying that? She, 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 she clearly liked the show and likes the movie. So why would she say that in her review? If you're right, why would she say that? It's irrelevant. She shouldn't even bring it up in the review. But she if you are right, out. why would a fan of the show, a female, write that? Um... Okay, well, I mean, there's definitely a lot more female... Maybe you're one of the very few straight males who likes that show. I just don't think people give it a chance because of, like, just... Well, that's the same like, difference. If we're not giving it a chance, that means we're not going to see it. That means you are one of the few. Yeah, I am one of the few, but I, I'm, I'm not debating the fact that, I'm, that there's a lot more female listeners. You said earlier, oh, you'd be surprised how many straight men are going to... You said that. You'd be surprised. No, I would be surprised because the, 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 it's definitely not true. You'd be surprised that it's more than you think. It's definitely not, a, I mean, a, a, a huge number. Of yeah, yeah, and most of them are being dragged there by their girlfriends who are constantly, uh, uh, you know, pussy whipping them and, and, and nagging them and haranguing them. Did you go to that movie alone? Oh, I haven't been showing in Egypt yet. I'm going to wait for it to come out on DVD. You, so you haven't seen it? Well, I know the show really well. I've watched like all all six seasons twice. So why wouldn't you pay to see the movie? I will. I'm telling you, it hasn't come out. You yet. just said you're going to wait for the DVD. Because the movie hasn't come out. Yet. When it does, will you pay to see it? For sure. A hundred percent. And and you're going to take your who? Girlfriend? Uh, actually, another male friend of mine. Oh, that tells me uh, okay. everything okay. I need to know. Hey, guys, why don't we all drink some Cosmos and go see Sex in the City this weekend? Come on, let's go. Let's make a night out of it. Then we could have a little pajama party after it's over. We could talk about the characters. 
By the way, did anybody see TMZ last week? Uh, my hotel room in Paris, by the way, got got uh, TV from Dubai. That's how I saw TMZ last week, from Dubai. And they showed uh, photographs of uh, of uh, Sarah Jessica Parker's hands. They said they wanted to know why her hands looked like she was 90 years old. <laughs> Take a close look. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Alex, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. Long time, fifth time, Daddy. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I just wanted to let you know. Uh, first off, Blake and Mustafa are complete pussies because they watched it or they're about to watch it. And, and second of all, I think we have to understand, for the audience out there, we have to understand the, the cultural difference between Egypt and America. The, the, the typical American male is definitely not like the Egyptian male. And that's why. <laughs> that's, that's true. Why, go ahead. No, I said that. I'm sure that's true. And that's why Mustafa is all about watching it. And, you know, I guarantee it doesn't have a girlfriend because vaginas aren't as available as they are here in America. <laughs> you would even take one of those old bags if you were in Egypt, you say? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I've already seen the best because of you, Dad. Thank you for that, Alex. I appreciate the call. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM, 1-800-5800-866. Dad, what's cracking? How you doing? Somebody's ass as soon as I get out of here. Damn, boy. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. At one 800 800 tom that's our telephone number. Sex and the City, the movie, is number one in the box office. <laughs> uh, those uh, horrifying old, old hags. I was going to say fugly old hags, but it's redundant. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. By the way, if you go to our MySpace page, get a look at Sarah Jessica Parker. I'm serious. Don't take my word on this. Go to our MySpace page. It's myspace.com slash Tom Likas. You can uh, put your own commentary up there. Tell us what you think about uh, a close-up shot of Sarah Jessica Parker's hands. Oh boy. I mean, and by the way, what it goes to show is, you t I'm telling you, what kind of designer outfit can you put on a person that is going to disguise that or make you not notice that? Go look at it. MySpace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. Do it. Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Keith on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom, how are you? I'm doing okay, Keith. I am a new listener, first-time caller. Cool. I got a funny story. Um, I lived down in South Bay. Um, while my girlfriend was out and about doing her thing, I decided to go see Indiana Jones by myself, the 10 o'clock showing. So I'm sitting in there. The credits are done rolling, and the movie's getting ready to start. And not lying, all at once, HBO films, and this crazy, girly little music kicks in. And Sarah Jessica Parker starts talking. And I'm like, wait a minute, where the heck am I? And I'm looking down, I'm looking at my ticket. Yes, I'm in the right place. Panic starts to go over the whole audience that's there. All these guys have brought their sons and their kids, and we're all looking at each other. And they actually loaded the wrong film oh, at God. the theater. So there was immediate chaos, and uh, I have to give credit to the theater. You know, they, they did switch it back, and eventually when they got it loaded, you know, when that Lucasfilms little emblem came up, there was a lot of sigh of relief for uh, that crowd. But i got to tell you, that was a weird feeling to be expecting Indiana Jones and to get that sickening music kicking in at the beginning. <laughs> and just to quote Peter Griffin, how can, from Family.
Family Guy. How can Sarah could Sarah Jessica Parker be on TV when she looks like a foot? <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for doing this, and to all the straight guys out there, you are not going to this movie on your own unless your girlfriend is dragging you there, and you're only telling her you'll go so you can get some, and that's. <laughs> Thank God my girlfriend was kind enough not to bring me because she knows I wouldn't go anyway. So. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Hey, thanks a lot. I'm glad you guys are talking about this. And if you don't mind, take me out with a bong hit. Here you go, Keith. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Have you gone to see Sarah Jessica Parker's hands yet? Have you seen that? <laughs> I'm not making this up. Go to our MySpace page, myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. Go look. Then you can add your commentary. <laughs> Clay on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Clay. How you doing, Tom? Doing okay. Uh, I just want to put my two cents on this whole sex in the city thing, okay? I'm a Texan, and I know that most of the men that I know, we don't watch sex in the city. I've never even seen a full episode. And I just want to tell all the men out there that are trying to defend this movie and say, oh, it's a good movie. All we talk about is shopping and sleeping with younger men. This isn't something that, this isn't something that, that appeals to guys. This is something I talk to my friends, you know, I'm not sitting on the couch when Sex and the City comes on and Sarah Jessica Parker talks about, oh, the guy she just slept with. And I'm like, you know, Dave, she is so right. This is, this is, this is riveting. It's not something that guys are supposed to watch. It's not, it's, it's not marketed towards guys. And guys saying that it's a good show, I think it's BS, honestly. I mean, it's, it's not something that, those are things that, Guys talk about it, am I right? It's not you oh. talk with your friends about shoe shopping and No, know, no. And by the way, I don't even talk to my guy friends about my sex life, okay? Because they don't care. Yeah. Not because I'm a prude. They don't care. They don't exactly. care. They don't want to know. They don't care. It's not something guys sit around and talk about. All the guys want to know is did you get any? Fantastic. Done. That's it. We don't talk Those about the technique or nothing. No, guys don't talk about that. Now, now, Clay, you're calling from Texas where, where it is not a crime to be a man. Thank God for Texas. We, we go to Texas several times every year. We love it. We're coming back, I think, later this summer. And, and what do you think people in Texas are going to say if they see a man in line to see Sex of the City, the movie? Uh, I imagine they'll form a posse and start whooping some... <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, I, I, I have friends that work in movies, a movie theater over here. It's a really popular movie theater. And thus far, the only men that we see go into the sex and the sea, I, I go to watch Indiana Jones almost every night. Right. And the only men we see are men with their girlfriends. And <laughs> they do not look happy. Yeah. <laughs> I look at you like, please help me. <laughs> that's and like even going like, with your girlfriend. It's, if you go with your girlfriend just because she wants to see it, that means that you have absolutely no control over your manhood. I'm not going to have my girlfriend take me to go see Sex in the City. I think. Yeah, I, th I think. I think. I think. Her own money. She can go watch it. I think you got no control over your life. If if your girl gets you to go see Sex in the City, your life is out of control. And, I mean, it's just, I, I honestly feel like the men that defend sex in the city have no manhood. It's like the moment you started watching sex in the city is the moment it, the, your manhood slipped away. Yeah, I, 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 want, I just want to say this. I, to, to the straight men who've gone to see sex in the city, think about it. Give this some thought. I mean, look, there's nothing wrong with being gay. Come out. We'll accept right. you. We'll accept you. We'll embrace you. Yeah. I mean, I think this is a good test. If a man goes to see Sex in the City, he's probably oh, really? gay. Nothing. By the way, nothing wrong with being gay. Our own Dean J. D'Amelio has just moved to West Hollywood, a gay city, zip code 90069, and I don't think that's an accident. Yeah. Now, 
Now, again, if you're gay, fantastic. And I really think this is a good opportunity for the men who do see sex in the city. If you haven't already come out, this would be a good, like a litmus test. If, if you're a male and you're seeing sex in the city, chances are it's time for the rainbow flag to be flying above your building. That's true. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I say, here's what I say. After after you've seen Sex in the City and you had some cosmos with your girlfriend, uh, maybe time to go out, or, or your boyfriend, maybe mm -hmm. time to go down to the dealer and pick up a Mazda Miata or another one of those uh, fine uh, vehicles, right. many of which come with the rainbow uh, bumper sticker already uh, on the back there, you know, like the VW uh, bug or whatever. Go out and buy one of those and then uh, drive around and proclaim that you're gay. Tell everybody, you know, there's nothing wrong with being gay. I, I, I embrace it. I think it's fantastic. If people want to be gay, I think it's great. I mean, you wouldn't have to go fly a rainbow flag. You go see Sex in the City. We already know. Uh, you know what? If you just put a Sex in the City logo above your house, we know. Oh, yeah. We know you're gay. That's absolutely correct. It's okay to be gay. And I know gay men are going to love this movie. So I, rather than making fun of the guys who are going, I say, let's salute these men for co finally coming out of the closet and admitting what they really are, which is gay. Let's go ahead and make that official. If you're going to see sex in the city and you're a man, you're gay. No, that's it. Done that's deal. Uh, you know what? I think that uh, some of these organizations, uh, there's some of the gay organizations, maybe they ought to have like a sign-up sheet outside the movie when men are coming out. Sign them right up. Correct. You know, you've got uh, all these uh, gay organizations that support gay rights. It's an election year. It'd be a good time to register some voters out there. Right. Some gay voters. Exactly. But I think that we should, that's, we're gonna, let's make it official right now. If you see sex in the city, whether your girlfriend makes you, if your girlfriend makes you, you don't, you, you're not even a man as it stands. Yes. I'm not going to have a woman tell me what to go see. Although I will, say, I, will say, I will say, if your girlfriend drags you to see sex in the city, you're going to want to take your balls out of her purse before you declare that you're gay because you're going to need those when you're in the gay community. Right, exactly. You're going to need them. If you, go, if you go see Sex in the City, then... You can't walk around gay neighborhoods without your balls. you got to have exactly. them. Okay. But it's uh, official now. That, I, I, I've just made a proclamation. All right. <laughs> you heard it here first. That's right. I'll tell you what. I'll, city, you know, here in California, they're about to accept gay marriage. I say maybe we have some gay weddings for some of these guys. We're going to see Sex in the City. Right, and then the reception, they'll be playing Sex in the City, the TV show, and the movie. But, on different yeah, movies. exactly. That's right. And, and then you can, to, you can dance to the Ting Tings. It'll be fantastic. Right, dance to Raining Men. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Nayeli, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. I just wanted to say that Sex in the City is for women, and actually, I think it's mostly for gay men because it's written by gay men. And sometimes the show, I, I just look at it, I'm like, a woman wouldn't say that. It's mostly gay men acting out their fantasies. And if you're a guy, you you wouldn't want to see that. And if you're a woman who takes your man to see that. You need to go get girlfriends. I went, and I went with my two best gay friends. There you go. I mean, so simple as that. That's who you go with. Exactly. It was great, too. There was a lot of uh, transsexuals, like 30, in a theater of, like, 200. It was, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> Nayeli, thank you for that. Uh, Lori on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hello. Hi. I love you. Thank you. Now... You crack me up. I don't know why I listen to you, but you crack me up. But I have. Yeah, well, that's that's point. why you listen to me, huh? That's why you listen to me. That's right. But I don't understand why you are making fun of these fugly people. When aren't you considered fugly? Oh, I'm hideous, but I'm. I don't go into the movies where uh, designer fashions, and and uh, I'm not delusional into thinking I'm some high fashion model. But I thought I don't take my I don't take so my turkey neck I don't take my turkey neck down Fifth Avenue. And wear all these expensive frocks and, and pretend I, I, I'm some kind of a fashion mom. Oh, but they don't care because they make so much money. Isn't that the most important thing? Well, but again, they're delusional. They are delusional because they think they're attractive. I see. I haven't listened to the whole show, so I didn't know. But I didn't I'll tell you what, buy a radio, and the next time you tune in, listen carefully. 
and express an opinion based on knowing what we're talking about, okay? Okay. Good. Our email address is tom at blowmeuptom.com. Go take a look at Sarah Jessica Parker's hands. MySpace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. The Tom Likas Show.